Here's how to make a security camera blocking baseball hat or pair of sunglasses. This project is based off the sunglasses featured in the new MacGyver TV show. I recreated the sunglasses to see firsthand how good they are and shared the results on TikTok. A lot of my followers wanted to see a tutorial on how to make a pair of these sunglasses for themselves. This tutorial improves on that use case and I'm using a baseball hat to be less conspicuous, but I will also demonstrate on how to configure the sunglasses as well. First, I will review how this technology works and why it is so interesting. We first need to understand infrared light. This diagram illustrates some of the forms light can take. We're normally aware of visible light, but this is just one tiny sliver of the full light spectrum. Light has an inverse relationship between its energy and wavelength. At the left side of the spectrum, we see gamma rays, which have super high energy and very short wavelengths. At the right side, we see AM radio waves with very low energy and super long wavelengths. Now look to the right of the visible light sliver. This is where infrared light is located. Since it's not in the visible light sliver, that means it's invisible. Common things that emit infrared light are warm things like a fire or your body heat. Normal everyday cameras like the one in your phone don't care about infrared light because we want to take pictures to capture what the human eye sees. However, what if you want to see what's going on during the nighttime and don't want to turn on a bunch of lamp posts? Well, one solution is to flood the environment with infrared light. Humans wouldn't notice it, but we can manufacture cameras to specifically look for the infrared spectrum. This process gives our cameras night vision and has worked very well over the decades. When we look at this security camera, do you notice the ring of red LEDs around the lens? To see the difference at night between regular mode and infrared mode, here is a video of me turning on my camera blocker. This first video is in regular mode and does not have infrared enabled. Notice how the LEDs are not blinding the camera. And in the second shot, infrared mode is enabled. Look how much better you can see with the camera's infrared LEDs illuminating the environment. And when this video was taken, I had three quarters of the LEDs covered for testing purposes. So it's still pretty good. So the reason the camera blocker works is that the camera is very sensitive to infrared light. And the camera blocker sends out a bunch of infrared light, which basically blinds the camera. It's like if someone were to shine a flashlight in your face. You can still see, but you only see a very bright light. Now that we know how the camera works, let's take a look at the camera blocker and start by creating a circuit diagram. We need a battery that will power the circuit. The top side here is the positive voltage and the bottom side is ground or negative voltage. First, the positive voltage runs through the switch indicated by these lines here. Next, it runs through a current limiting resistor indicated by these zigzag lines. The value of the resistor depends on the battery voltage and LED specifications. After the resistor, the voltage runs through the LED causing it to illuminate. Now, I know I drew the switches open, but if you were to close that switch, that's when the current actually runs through the circuit. So here is what the LEDs look like when soldered to the resistors. This example is for the camera blocking sunglasses that I made. Okay, now that we have the theory covered, let's start the tutorial. You will need the following components for this project. And if you would like to purchase a kit, visit the link in the description. A baseball hat. A flat brim works best to angle and secure the LEDs. Sunglasses. In case you'd rather use these than the hat. Electrical tape. Use this for keeping bare pins and wires separate. Also, if you're making the sunglasses, I suggest using this to secure the LEDs to the sunglasses. Wire. I'm using 30 American wire gauge. I highly suggest using a super thin wire for this project. I'm using 24 strands of 12 inch wire for the hat. If you're making the sunglasses, you may want to include extra wire to route the battery pack. Batteries. Three triple A's. Don't get the super cheap ones because they might not provide enough juice or die very quickly. Battery pack. This 4.5 volt battery enclosure includes a built-in switch and uses those three triple A's. Duct tape. To hold things in place. I'm using the color black to blend in with my hat. Resistors. You'll need 12 120 ohm resistors. These ones are rated at one quarter watt. Heat shrink. Used to separate bare pins and wires. I'm using three thicknesses. 1 8 inch, 3 30 seconds, and 1 16 inches. You could also use electrical tape if you don't want to use heat shrink. 
super bright infrared LEDs. I'm using 12 wide beam Everlight IR333Cs. And here are the tools you will need. A soldering iron. I use a Weller WES51 soldering station and love it. Solder. I enjoy using thin solder for electronics. A multimeter. I'm using a Fluke 101. This tool is optional, but extremely helpful when troubleshooting continuity and DC voltage. An infrared security camera. I'm using a D-Link 932L. This is optional, but very helpful for testing. Helping hands. This optional tool is extremely useful for soldering. Its alligator clip hands hold onto small things while you're busy holding the solder and the iron. Flush cutters. Used to cut small things or even strip wire if you have a steady hand. They're amazing. Wire strippers. Either automatic or regular style. Used to strip the wire that you'll be soldering the resistors to and the battery pack. And finally, a heat gun. Used for heat shrink if you're using it. If you don't have a heat gun, you can also use a soldering iron or lighter to shrink the heat shrink. Just be careful. First, we're going to assemble 12 sets of these infrared LED extensions. We'll combine the infrared LEDs, the resistors, and the wire in order to distribute the LEDs around the hat or sunglasses. Since the LED pins are too long, we're going to cut them with the flush cutters. The longer pin is the positive side, and I'm going to keep it like that so I don't get the pins mixed up. Next, I trim one of the resistor pins with the flush cutters in order to keep things compact. Then I grab the helping hands and place the LED on one side and the resistor on the other. I gather my soldering iron and solder wire and solder the resistor to the LED. Everyone has their own method for soldering. Don't judge me and I won't judge you. I grab two of my 12 inch wire strands and strip the ends. I'm using flush cutters to strip the wire because this wire is way too thin for my wire strippers. It takes a steady hand to strip super thin wire using cutters, but if you do it enough, you will improve your skills. Next, I trim the longer pin of the resistor to prepare for soldering. Then I place a wire strand in the helping hands and trim the end to match the length of the resistor pin. I grab my soldering iron and solder and melt some solder onto the wire and resistor. If you have trouble with the wire coming off of the resistor, you can wrap the wire around the resistor pin before soldering. Next, I flip the helping hands around and solder the second 12 inch wire strand to the negative pin of the LED. Okay, now you should have something that looks like this. One wire is soldered to a resistor, which is soldered to the positive pin of the LED, and the second wire is soldered to the negative pin of the LED. Again, for a more durable solution, you can wrap the wire around the pins before you solder. I use that method when assembling the other sets. I highly recommend using heat shrink on these wires to prevent a short circuit, but you could also use electrical tape. For the negative side, I'm using 1 16th inch diameter. Slide it down the wire and over the LED pin. For the positive side, I'm using 3 32nd inch diameter since I need a little bit more thickness to go over the resistor along this end. Push it all the way down and against the base of the LED. Now I'm using my heat gun to secure the heat shrink in place. Does anyone else love shrinking heat shrink? It is so satisfying. Okay, now you should have something that looks like this. You'll need to make 11 more of these LED extension sets. Oh, if you want to keep the wires more organized, you can use extra 1 16th inch heat shrink to cover the wire bundle on a set. This will help prevent tangles later on. Follow the same process for each set and then you'll have a bouquet of a dozen infrared LEDs. Next, we're going to combine all of the negative wires from the LED extensions. Very important note, do not mix up the positive and negative wires. You could cause a short circuit and kill your project. Start by taking one of the negative wires from two different sets and twist them together. If you have your own preferred method of combining wires, by all means use it. Now, add a third negative wire and twist along the other negative wires. Repeat this process until all negative wires are twisted together. Then repeat all of this again for the positive side and you will have something that looks like this. I marked my negative wires with electrical tape at the end. Now we're going to melt some solder along the wire bundles to allow for more efficient electrical flow. I remember when I was in middle school without a soldering iron and would twist wires together and pray they didn't come apart. Let me tell you, things are so much better with a soldering iron. Next, grab the battery pack. We're going to strip the ends of its wires. I'm using these automatic strippers. They're cheap and not perfect, but will work fine in this situation. I strip about an inch off and twist the stranded wire to prepare for soldering. Now do the same thing for the other battery wire. I'm now doing something called tinning the wire. This process will help keep the wire strand solid and allows for an easier time when we solder the battery pack to the LED extension sets. 
The next step will be to solder the negative battery wire to the negative LED wire bundle and the positive battery wire to the positive LED wire bundle. I didn't show it on camera, but I placed 1 8 inch heat shrink over the battery wires in order to prevent the wire bundles from shorting out. You can see the green and white heat shrink near the battery pack base. I start with the positive wires and twist them together like this. Then I melt solder along the wire, making sure to cover all along the new connection. Then I repeat this process for the negative side. You should now have something that looks like this. I slide the heat shrink over the exposed wire on the positive side, and then I do the same thing for the negative side. Then I grab my heat gun and I shrink the tubing on each of the sides. And the electronics are done! You should now have something that looks like this. Now it's time to give the LED some power. Grab the battery pack and slide off the cover. Insert three AAA batteries. Remember, don't buy the cheap ones. Now slide the cover back on and flip the battery pack around to locate the power switch. Now is a good time to test the electronics. I also recommend to test each LED extension set separately as you're assembling everything for increased confidence and to catch mistakes early. Power up your infrared camera and view its output on your phone or computer. Turn on the battery pack and hold each LED in front of the camera to make sure they're working individually. Now that the electronics are assembled, we can place them onto our sunglasses or hat. I'm going to quickly review where I would place the LEDs on the glasses but not actually do it since I'm using the hat. Secure them using electrical tape. And you could also drill 5mm holes into the plastic for the LEDs to get a better look. I would place two LEDs on each temple arm of the glasses. Then I would place three LEDs on both end pieces pointing forward. And finally I would place two around the bridge pointing forward. And now it's time for the hat. My plan is to evenly distribute the LEDs around the brim in order to turn this hat into a 180 degree camera blocker. I place an LED and secure it with a small piece of duct tape. Then I repeat this process for the rest of the LEDs. I believe that this hat makes a better camera blocker than the sunglasses because we're able to distribute the LEDs all around the brim. After I get all the LEDs in place, I make sure I'm happy with their placement. Then I use strips of duct tape to secure the wires in place and to provide a more uniform look to the hat. Make sure not to have any tape adhesive exposed or it might get in your hair. After all that is done, you should have something that looks like this. You can either keep the battery pack in the hat or place it through the hole in the back. The MacGyver inspired camera blocking hat is now complete and we're ready for full scale testing. I'm using a different camera for this test. This is a D-Link 5010L and I've mounted it to a tripod in my living room. First, here's a shot of me walking with the hat powered off. And now here's a shot with the hat powered on. Now I'm going to test the 180 degree feature. I put on the hat and I look forward. I have more LEDs pointed forward, so that's where it's most effective, but it also works great on the sides. I turn to my left. It looks good here. And then I turn to my right. Looks good here as well. While testing, I noticed that the MacGyver hat also makes a great infrared headlamp. What do you think? Anything that can be improved? And if you like these hacks, subscribe for more.